Hi there, I'm Peter Millard and this is 10 Minute Workshop where 10 minutes in the workshop is more than enough sometimes. Um, I've got a new series starting and that's coming right up. Okay, so I know it's barely mid-November, but if you look behind me over my shoulder there, just over there, just on the horizon, if you can imagine a horizon, that's, that's winter. And winter is coming and just ahead of winter, well that's going to be Christmas or the holiday season or whatever you call it. Uh, traditional sort of gift giving time. Now what happens with a lot of YouTubers in the maker space around that time is they do a sort of a recap of things they've made throughout the year that you could use as gift ideas. I don't really have anything <laughs> throughout the year that you'd use as gift ideas unless you're going to make somebody a, a console table or a <laughs> nice stack of MDF boxes. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd put a few little ideas together. Again, I'm not going to try and turn this into a craft channel, um, but a few little ideas uh, for you that might make good gifts. Uh, and I'm going to do those over the next few weeks. Now, uh, I've got you know quite a few ideas uh, and not that much time, so I'm not going to get through them all. Uh, but they will be, and I've got to sort of just remind myself of what they are here. Oh, we're going to have a couple of couple of candlesticks, candle holders, um, uh, 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 some trays, uh, maybe a watch holder, if I you know, smart watch type uh, holder, uh, phone holder, some coasters, drinks coasters, uh, uh, a couple of clocks, um, maybe a, a, a slightly different sort of plinth or display column. Uh, uh, oh, and a, a, a desk, uh, not a desk, uh, desk, uh, a table lamp. Um, that's the kind of thing. Anyway, uh, they're not going to be using exotic materials at all. It's all going to be sort of birch ply and maybe a little bit of hardwood. Probably mostly going to be uh, an MDF and domino free zone for the next few weeks. Uh, but I'm going to get through as many of these as I can. But to kick the series off, I'm going to start with something really simple and really straightforward. And I'm going to make a tea light holder. So tea lights, you know tea lights, little stubby candles in a metal container like this. Um, they've done to an extent to the candle industry what pallets did to the shipping industry in that they've standardised everything. Uh, you know that you can get a, a, a bag of tea lights from Ikea or from Amazon or you can pick them up at a local store and they're going to fit your tea light holder because these are now standard size, they're 40 mil across and 15 mil deep. Um, the beauty of that, of course, is that with a 40 mil cutter, you can actually make a tea light holder from just about any block of wood. Now, this is the kind of thing that lends itself particularly well to a bit of wood with a bit of history, something with, that's been reclaimed or upcycled. Um, you know, you can give somebody a gift and say, oh, yes, that, that came from the deck of the Titanic. I'm exaggerating, of course, because all the deck of the Titanic is on eBay already. Um, I, I don't really have anything like that, I've got to say. Um, what I do have is this. This is uh, uh, a lump of nine by inch and a half finished size of about 220 by uh, 32 mil, something like that. It's, it's all kind of covered in paint and glue. I bought these uh, about 10, 12, maybe 14 years ago, not, not long after I started doing this. I was doing all kinds of different sort of bits and pieces then. Um, and I use these as scaffold boards. Now, uh, just for access, there's, there's plenty of splits and shakes in these. If you look at this closely, there's all kinds of nastiness. Um, ordinarily, you'd run a mile from that, but in practice, that's the sort of thing, excuse me, that's the sort of thing that gives this timber a bit of character. And in fact, when you run a sander over it, it cleans up pretty well. So it's actually quite a nice piece of timber. It's sawn through and through. Uh, and the grains are really, uh, the, the annular rings here are really tight. Um, uh, just on a whim, I tried counting them. And there's well over, well over a hundred there. So, you know, given that I've had this 10, maybe 14 years, um, this tree was probably planted uh, about 18 years or so before my dad was born. So that's, you know, gives you a bit of a pause for thought, doesn't it? So we're just gonna take a slice out of this uh, to make a, a three light 
tea light holder. And what we're going to do to start with is we're just going to set these down approximately where we want them to be. And about there. And mark approximately how much of that we want, how much of that we, how wide we need to come. We're going to try and avoid these little knots and things here. It doesn't need to be too big. Somewhere around there. So when it comes to boring a 40 mil wide and 15 mil deep hole in a block of wood like this, um, the traditional bit to go for is called a Forstner bit. It's specifically designed to drill a flat bottomed hole. What you shouldn't be doing is trying to use a, a spade bit like this uh, because the, the pointy bit that gives it its centering is going to be too long. Forstner bits are designed to be very flush and very low. Uh, traditionally they've all been, always been quite expensive so there are other ways to do it um, although they do revolve around you being able to drill some other kind of hole as a template. One way to do it is to use uh, is to drill a 40 mil hole with a hole saw uh, and use a, a what's called a flush trim bit, sometimes a template bit. It's bearing guided around the edges so it doesn't cut outside of the template and you can just bore down with that and clear the, clear the waste away. Uh, unfortunately it, it does need you to bore a 40 mil hole and hole saws don't generally come in 40 mil sizes, they're 38 or 44. Uh, certainly I don't have any uh, of that exact size. And the other way to do it would be to try using a router and using a, a, a copy ring or a guide bush like this one. Again, we do have a bit of a headache with that in that you've then got to calculate the offset. Again, you've got to drill a hole big enough to act as a template. Uh, and if you're using the, the common size copy ring like this, which is uh, 30 mil, you've then got to work out if you're using a 16 mil bit, then you've got 14 mil offset, so you need a 40, 54 mil hole. Uh, Again, hole saws don't generally come in a 54 mil, so you've got to sort of jiggle that around um, to find the right size that's going to work for you. Okay. I got myself an Amazon, and I bought this 5-bit Forstner bit set, 35, 40, 45, 50, and 60 mil Forstner bits, for just £14. Um, no, they're not the best quality bits in the world, of course they aren't, but they're going to be perfect for this job, and compared to all the calculating offsets and all that sort of stuff. It seems like a pretty good deal to me, less than three pounds for a bit. Now you do need to use them in a drill press and that's one area where going on the router route would help. Okay, so this is gonna get a bit complicated. I've got a 24 mil guide bush and I've got a 14 mil router bit. So there's a 10 mil offset. So to get a 40 mil hole, I need a 50 mil template and I've got a 50 mil hole saw that'll do that. Let's give it a try. <laughs> I've no idea if this is going to work, but let's give it a go. So there's no arguing that that is absolutely a very clean and flat bottomed hole. It's a little bit on the big side. Probably could have done with a you know, 48 mil uh, hole saw. But you know, it's the right kind of depth uh, and that will definitely work. Um, however, much like when I use my Festool Domino, I'm going to be using my less than three pound force and a bit in a drill press to, to do mine. That will definitely work. That would actually definitely do the job. I think if I was doing that for real, I'd do three, uh, do the three, do a template with three holes in it rather than do one and try and move it along because that's obviously going to be easier because then you're not getting in the way of the, the supports. It does need to be clamped very firmly down. Um, and again, probably worth doing on a bigger piece of timber and then cutting this down to size. Uh, but yeah, fortunately a bit of time, I think.
Now I've got to say, for a three quid force and a bit, that's actually not bad at all. I've seen a lot worse than that. You do get a very slight point at the very base, but there's not a great deal we can do about that with this particular force to bit set, uh, or, or many others to be honest. Um, you know, at a push, there you go, you've got a, you've got a tea light holder. I think we can probably do a little bit better than that. We'll just sort of fancy it up around the edges a little bit and maybe put a bit more of a base on it just to make it look that little bit nicer before we start putting a coat of oil on it. Think of this as a kind of public service, you know, giving all you proper woodworkers a chance to laugh at my extremely poor hand planing skills. Especially when there's a knot involved. So I'm going to finish this off with a coat of Osmo. Um, because that's what I've got. Uh, it's it's a nice oil with a satin finish. But to be honest, I would use anything you've got. It's not going to make much difference to this. But this will, even on a fairly ordinary little bit of pine like this, this is going to bring the grain up nicely. So shows up every blemish in my hand planing. <laughs> but then you're already you're already spotted that. You? <laughs> so that's it for our first gift idea video. Hope you've uh, enjoyed that. It's a simple little thing, a bit like a school project, really, isn't it? Um, but I hope it. Uh, encourages you to have a go at some of these things. Obviously, as I said at the top of the video, uh, this lends itself particularly well to a bit of upcycled, recycled timber or a nicely figured hardwood if you've got any of those scraps. Or if you don't have any of those and if you have a bit more time, then this is the same plank of wood that's been varnished and then had the varnish rubbed back so the grain starts to come through. And then if you wax or oil that, it'll really bring that out nicely. Obviously it's a bit more work and you've got to decide what to do inside the actual holes where the tea lights go. Um, but either way, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it out amongst your friends, and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. New videos up every Friday at noon. I hope to see you then. Take care.